with the with the excavation we set up here I wanted the kids to have the same thing like what's there and I wanted them just to be completely engaged and enthralled with what was under that earth and they they are so funny because they'll ask me things like do you know what's down there and are these bodies real and um, are all these artifacts real and like they really they really are quite convinced that um, that it really is a real thing and um, it, it's just hilarious so I think I think we've done quite well in creating an authentic experience This excavation started in 2012 um, and I have run two other excavations at another school where we had some 1800s remains um, but when I got to Cromer I just decided that we could do the same thing here and I could actually have a lot more fun with it by putting in my own pit. Um, so from there um, we decided that we would um, cut in a 4 by 4 metre pit and we created the skeletons to go in it because every child likes to dig skeletons, basically. So um, the pit was going to be divided into four quarters, so I needed four skeletons because you couldn't have one quarter that didn't have a skeleton in it, otherwise they'd feel upset. So um, I had some Year 10 students help me create the skeletons. Basically, one packet of white clay creates one human full-size skeleton. Uh, so it took us about two weeks to create the skeletons and then what I had to do was because we replicate um, real life digs then you have to choose each each two years I swap the pit around but you choose your scenario and you make the associated objects to put into the pit. So the first excavation that we had was the Minoan uh, temple human sacrifice. Uh, temple fell down during an earthquake. They were trying to stop the earthquake by sacrificing a victim. And this one, um, this one is a real site in in Crete, um, around the 1600 BC. Uh, during the uh, the earthquake, the um, the whole temple fell down. So not only the sacrifice victim died, then everybody else died as well. So um, there were actually three sacrifices and one sacrificee um, and that made our, our first excavation. That one was, uh, was pretty fun and we actually got a lot of publicity out of that one too. We ended up in the Sydney Morning Herald on a Sunday, so around two million views around New South Wales for that dig. I think we're on about page eight. So the kids were really excited about that. It was the inaugural dig and we, we actually reached a huge audience on that one. So we, uh, in our first year, we actually made it to the front page of the History Teachers magazine also. Uh, this time, we're, our second dig, our first one was the Minoans. This time we decided to do piracy because um, when I teach piracy to year 10, we look at a site of, um, of Port Royal which is in um, modern day Jamaica, which again sank during an earthquake. But it was, um, it was an interesting one because it was where pirates went to hang out when they were not pirating. So it was a town where they had a lot of fun. Um, you know, there were lots of bars and lots of basically naughty business that went on. And you know, we all know that pirates live for a good time. They didn't live for a long time. But uh, we used it to support our classroom teaching and to create some quality learning experiences, engaging, um, you know, engaging our students to learn more deeply. By um, I had my Year 10s help me design the pit based on the site of Port Royal after we looked at the archaeology there. And then um, we brought the Year 7s out to excavate it so they can learn about what, how we can learn about history by reading the, the remains from the past. But um, every kid loves a pirate, so that one was, was a big hit. Um, yes. Yes.
I found we found like tiles and a body, and we've also found um, a few artifacts like jugs and mugs. And then the boys were jacked. Um, we're actually cleaning around so we can get the levels correct, so they're all the same. And um, yeah, we've just found a few artifacts around. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you just gotta be gentle with these things because because these are thousands of years old and they could be really fragile. Uh, we've had quite a bit of interest in the dig because I think we're the only school in Australia that really um, presents such an authentic experience and so much detail. So we've had schools come in to visit. Um, we've had, like oh, when we are excavating, we've had various teachers come across and observe as we've been doing it. We've had um, some interest from other high schools, uh, maybe in the future they might come in and even excavate the pit. Uh, we've had the primary schools, I think we've had about, I don't know, nine or ten primary schools visit to date. Um, on top of that, we've set up a Facebook site that's called Archaeology in Schools. Uh, from that, we've had lots of views and comments from right around the world, really. We've had various people just tap in and say they like this and ask us questions about that. Um, we also ran a training day for teachers on how to set up their own digs so they can look at it online. They can um, come in and visit us while we're doing it. Um, occasionally, we also run these training days. Um, on top of that, we also have a YouTube channel and the YouTube channel is called Chroma Big Dig and um, on that channel we've got a number of videos on there just showing how we made the bones, showing about you know the excavation in process, looking at the skills of archaeology that we teach while we are out there in the pit. So it's not just about digging something up and finding it, it's using correct excavation methods, it's using correct methods of recording the material and then it's also about learning how to interpret the material in an accurate manner. I guess what the, um, it, we just do it from a really practical sense like one, find an area that's appropriate in your school grounds. I like to choose an area that's out of the way. Um, so that you haven't got kids that are traipsing through it. You see we've tucked ours around the back of a building that has very limited access. Um, also, obviously, you really need to check your school plans because you won't, don't want to go bringing in an excavator and um, it digs up a power line or a plumbing line or something like that. Um, neat, we, we were lucky that the soil out the back of our school is sand because we are quite close to the beach area. Some schools might have hard rock clay which, um, which wouldn't be great. So excavating out, I think a four by four meter pit is good for a two day dig. If you put your remains down, probably a little bit less than a meter, maybe about 75 centimeters, um, then if you divide the pit into four, it takes a single class about two and a half hours to dig out a quarter of it. So that way you can get the, through the dig in two days. If I had hard rock clay, I would just simply get an excavator in, take that clay out and then I would just put in sand. And um, sand, sand is really easy to excavate, it's, it's clean, you know, you haven't got all the grit and everything that's getting in, you know, it's easy to pull out, it's easy to put back in. If you lose a little bit of um, sand, you know, each time you dig your pit goes down a little bit, you don't get it all back in. But just to top it up, it's pretty easy as well, it's, um, it's fairly inexpensive. I guess I really hope that they gain that passion for history, um, to have an understanding of archaeology, to have an understanding of, you know, how, how we gain our knowledge about history and how it's, it's really quite a fluid thing because sometimes, you know, history books are written and then a new piece of evidence will come up that proves something is, that's, it's wrong. So then the history book has to be rewritten. Um, and that happens all the time and I guess that's the thing about history, it's really just a theory and it's a theory based on the available evidence and that evidence changes a lot and it's archaeology that contributes to a lot of that. 
So, you know, there's a lot of things that I want them to get out of it. You know, one is to have a lot of fun and to enjoy it, but then to really switch them on to understanding um, where we get our information from. I think one of the big successes of the excavation is the fact that it is so student driven. Um, you know, I can't take out all that soil on my own. I can't carry all the equipment out there. I can't manage all those kids doing all those three different jobs at the same time. So it's, um, you know, it's a great bonding experience um, between yourself and your students. And the success is really driven by the fact that the students so enthusiastically embrace it. They've been really responsible. If I tell them they've got to be here an hour before school, they're here and they're helping me set up tents and bring tables out and carry shovels. And a lot of it is really is, it's quite hard work. But you know, the, those kids have never let me down. And the success is really, you know, it's, it's them that, that do it. And um, I guess that's one of the things I really enjoy about it. It's fantastic.